so much. Well, that ridiculous drum solo is Jean Coy. <laughs> Bass solo, it was Alex Frank. Yeah. On piano, the one and only Josh Nelson. Thank you guys so much. I'm Lori Bell, in case you're streaming and you don't know who I am. Probably don't, but you might. <laughs> um, well, these guys are all leaders in their own right. They've all recorded albums under their own names, and um, they've worked and toured with many, many famous people. I'm just glad that they were available to be here tonight. Um, so this is very, um, makes me very happy to be on stage with you guys. <laughs> Um, so there's like a lot of people to thank um, for this great stage. Tim Ellis, I know you're, you're watching. This is amazing. Um, LA needs something like this. San Diego needs something like this. I think this is like the best thing I've seen. <laughs> well, COVID, what, what are you gonna do? I mean, this is like a dream come true, being, on, being able to play live for an audience again. Um, streaming is okay, but it's just not the same thing. So anyway, Terrence Love is also involved, and my great friend George Claven, who's sitting right there up front, he's responsible for me being here tonight. Oh yeah, George Claven is the owner of Resonance Records. I'm sure you guys have heard about this amazing label, famous for its historical releases, and I did an album for George back in 2008, The Music of Javan. Um, and he has a brand new album right now out uh, featuring Eddie Daniels and Josh Nelson and a bunch of other incredible musicians, music of Yvonne Linz. Uh, George is half Brazilian, which is why he loves to put out Brazilian records and he loves the music. So I wanted to be able to do something for you in that, in that genre. I, I couldn't pull it together for a Javon arrangement. Those are like nine pages long and I didn't want to be mean to the guys, so I thought I'd just choose a show beam tune. Uh, this is a lesser known one. Uh, a lot of people play it, but not as often. This is called, If You Never Come To Me.
Thank you. All right. I think I need a minute with the drummer. Just a minute, but you know, it could be 10.
Thank you guys so much. Josh Nelson on the piano. Yeah, that was an amazing solo, oh my God. And Gene Coy on the drums, another crazy solo. Alex Frank on the bass. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, we're gonna do a couple of my tunes right now. Um, uh, I'm from the East Coast, I'm originally from Brooklyn, and um, I uh, did a little tribute CD about four years ago uh, called Brooklyn Dreaming. I know a lot of you guys have my album, um, but if you don't, um, I have some here for sale, and if you can't buy it, I'll just give it to you. I really don't care. You know, I don't make records to make money. I just, it's a creative expression, you know. But it, it is nice to, you know, get a little reward, but um, <laughs> you know what I mean, Josh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right, you know what I mean. Um, no, it was great growing up in Brooklyn. My dad was a big band lead trumpet player. You know, there's trumpet players and then there's lead trumpet players, which, you know, is kind of a distinction. I don't know, my dad used to play in the stratosphere. But he, he was, uh, he worked in New York for about 30 some odd years um, before I came along and, and uh, a lot of amazing stories because uh, he used to hang out on 52nd Street after all of these gigs with the big bands. And um, so, you know, a lot of stories were passed down uh, to me about all the incredible players he got to hear live every night during that golden era. Um, anyway, uh, this song was a little memory of, uh, my dad used to take me to rehearsals. After the big bands, he also played in smaller ensembles. He used to drag me down with them. I loved it. Um, I don't remember a lot of it because I was pretty young, but um, he used to always say, we're going down to lower Manhattan. There was this huge loft where the musicians used to gather and uh, it's just a nice memory of that. This one's called Lower Manhattan. Hope you guys enjoy it. Really, mainly, I was just going for vibe, so. <laughs>
Thank you guys so much. Uh, another one of mine uh, we're going to move on with uh, is a little waltz that I wrote. Uh, there's nothing more uh, flattering than having someone record your music, and um, I've had a few pianists record this next waltz. Uh, of course, it was an honor, um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I wrote it for another pianist named Joe Azzarello, a very fine player. He used to show me a lot of voicings uh, on the piano when I was a teenager, and uh, th that carried that carried me a long way. So um, anyway, this one's called A Waltz for Joe. Hope you like it.
Trio for We're live. Tony Guerrero, what's going on, brother? How are you, Terrence? I'm I'm as grand as can be. What an exciting show we got tonight. Well, hold on, hold on. It's first of all, it's good to have you back. We've uh, not had you here for a couple weeks, right? I know. Yeah, I know that I had. Which means, uh, by the way, now I've done it more than you because I've only yes, you have. One. Yes, so you I, have. I am the new king of late night. I owe you a a, a, a shot of of uh, Cuban rum. <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm glad you're feeling better. I wish you looked better, but we got, I know we got there's nothing I got. can do. Nothing I can do about that. Well, I mean, there are some filters I could put on here, but I'll live with it this way. But thank you very much, and and I did miss it. And uh, you know, I've been through a few little uh, medical issues, but uh, I see light at the end of the tunnel, and. You know, right now I'm so excited about what's going on. You know, we got Lori Bell on the stage with Josh Nelson, Gene Coy. I mean, it's an incredible Alex Frank. group. Alex Frank, you know, what an incredible group there. And, uh, you know, and I'm so, so, so excited about our special guests and our special announcement because we haven't even put it on, on the website yet. We have the great, the fantastic Barbara Morrison coming up. And Yes, we we've yeah. talked about her since we started this. About absolutely, on, so. and I had the great pleasure of of uh, working with Barbara once a month, probably for at least sixteen or seventeen years at Steamers, and she's bringing along her boo crew with Ron Bishop, and uh, you know uh, she's got uh, Al, uh, Charles Small on guitar, and just an incredible group, and uh, she's going to be at Campus Jacks. Live steamers jazz at campus jacks on December, December 10th. 10th. That's a Thursday night. Tickets will go on sale and they will sell out. I trust you. Yeah. Barbara's doing great. And guess what? She's coming on tonight to talk to us about it. That's right. Very great from the Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center in Lamert Park, uh, in Los Angeles. And she's another one of the most incredible, talented, hardworking person in this business and in addition to that she's a presenter and she loves to help young people and promote and and she, it's just what a what a lovely soul and i'm just really excited about seeing her yeah me too i love yeah. her. I, have a, I have a i have a good history with her from a long time ago so great great and then after she's gonna come on uh we're gonna have Lori, who's on the stage right now with her group She's going to come and join us. We'll have a little bit of a talk. Right on. You want to walk? Let's walk through some of the schedule just so people know, and they can be buying tickets right now. Uh, starting exactly. November twelfth, next this coming Thursday is going to be uh, Elena and George Gilliam with the Gilliam Quintet. You want to tell me when? So. And uh, uh, November thirteenth, which is Friday, the day after that, Sal Lozano, who was just there last week with my band, the amazing sax player who was there with me, is yeah, going to be man. here with his band, which are all just incredible players. His, his group is called All In, and uh, he'll be there with his band on Friday, November 13th. Sunday, November 15th, the uh, prelude, like Lori's doing right now, is going to be Nina Herzog, who we've had on the show before. She's That's a right. young, young Broadway-style singer who's just really, like, you know, upper echelon for that type of music and um uh why don't you take over the rest yeah i'm excited about that too and then also another exciting you know first at, at campus jacks a great latin jazz band and we're bringing on francisco torres with his latin jazz band and no, wait, wait, hold, on, hold on a second i'm mexican so okay. isn't any band i bring a latin jazz band well i would i you could say that I've got some stories about that, you know, <laughs> using the name, you know. Remember, Chris Williams yeah, won that's true. the best yeah. Latin jazz for the Orange County, uh, uh, what do you call Music it? Music Award. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. The best Latin jazz. So, you know, we all have a little bit of that. We live in Southern California. But uh, Francisco, you know, the thing about him is... No, he's the real deal. He's the real deal. And Francisco and I go way back. He was the first guy to bring a Latin jazz band into steamers in 1995 or six or so. Yeah. And he ultimately introduced me to the Bonda brothers and Poncho Sanchez, which started to be this most incredible Latin jazz lineup that I had at steamers on a weekly basis. Francisco Aguabea, you know, Bobby Redfield, 
you know, all of the greats coming in, Poncho Sanchez and the Estrada brothers. And uh, yeah, so we're really excited about kicking off our uh, first time at Campus Jacks, a true yeah. jazz band. And uh, he's got the name to go with it too, right? Yeah, that's true. And then, argue with you. and that's Thursday, November 19th. Tickets are available at campusjacks.com. Also on the 22nd, our prelude, like we're doing before now with the summer, with the winter time where we're having the band on stage come first. And then we'll do our interview after that. We have Greg Vale and the Brick Alley Blues Band. And then a very, very special event coming up on Wednesday, November 25th. Since they're, we're not open on Thanksgiving the 26th. Wednesday the 25th, we're going to be bringing in the Swing Kittens. And this is the two Nicoles, you know, and, and these girls, they do like an Andrew sister thing with uh, Tom Kubis and some other people are going to be in the band. It's going to be fantastic. And for that show, I can tell you from the, my history at Steamers, the night before Thanksgiving is always a tremendously big night because a lot of people, their parents say, your mother says, get out of the kitchen, go out. There's no food. You can't touch anything. Well, I, I, I think ultimately it was packed at steamers because it just helped people really appreciate the Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they have they have one steamer panini and they go, give me some turkey. <laughs> give me some turkey. <laughs> Actually, you had, a, you had a panini there that I loved. I can't remember what it was, but it was like a French onion panini or something. Oh, it? man, I, there yeah. are a lot of them. I'll have to bring I'll have to bring that menu out and, and, and give right. Jack that so he can so he can uh, continue the legacy right. on that. And all of the in-person dinner tickets are available at campusjacks.com where we have socially distant table seating for the following all the best practices of health and safety. Also, you know, if you're not in Southern California, you want to be a part of our steamers, Jack's jazz at, at Jack's audience family. You can join us for all those uh, streaming broadcasts at steamersjacks.com oh, on YouTube. Yes, sir. It just dawned on me. We, two, we need to add two menu items, items at Jack's. We need to have uh, the a steamers panini, which would be uh, Jack shrimp, on a panini, come on! Perfect, perfect. See? Jackson on panini, and then we need to have a rigatoni Guerrero. But there you go, rigatoni Guerrero. Right on. Or a rigatoni, a rigatoni Miguel, rigatoni. No, no, Miguel it's rigatoni Guerrero. Rigatoni. I actually have a dish called rigatoni Guerrero. We'll you sure it's not me. Miguel rigatoni that's Guerrero? Not, that's, a, that's a whole other dish. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Yes, we got to do that. So you can always go to steamersjacks.com or go to either YouTube or Facebook. Go to Jack's Hideaway, Campus Jacks, uh, or Steamers Jazz. And we want to uh, thank you for watching all these broadcasts on Sundays and Thursdays. If you can, you want to help us with the supporting the, by joining us. There's a membership or even for just a few bucks at our tip jar at steamersjacks.com. Or you can always Venmo Jack's Hideaway. And, hey, I think uh, we're gonna. I think we're gonna finish out a little bit of Lori Bell right now, and then we're gonna come back at six thirty. Perfect. To, uh, to to bring on our guests, uh, Barbara Morrison. Beautiful. And, uh, and I think we're yeah, free and a few other things. Then Lori's gonna join us after that. So there you go. Good to be back, Tony. It's good to be back here. You good know, you've always back. slighted me two or three times so far. So I need a little bit of you know. The night's, the night's young, Terrence. <laughs> well, uh, keep those things going in this break here, and, and I'll, be, I'll be prepared for them when we come back. Well, it's not like I won't kick a man when he's down. It's just there you go. Time <laughs> yeah, it's the only way to be kicked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Back to Lori Bell.
have time. So I want to just talk for a second again about George Clavin. He um, not only has this wonderful record company, but he also has a foundation called Rising Jazz Stars. And um, one of his passions, aside from creating great albums, is finding talent. And uh, he found me. I mean, come on. Yeah. He found me. <laughs> Kidding. No, I'm very grateful. Um, and uh, he recently has found um, a young, about 17-year-old, uh, very, very wonderful violinist. And she's here tonight. And so we're going to bring her up right now. Her name is Gianna Pedradon. We're going to play a Bill Evans composition called Funkalero.
gosh all right we're back we got some good stuff coming up though absolutely and and i know it's barbara morrison but before that you know there's something that i was just talking to you about earlier today and for those of you who don't know it or haven't seen it yet last thursday uh on the stage uh tony with this pretty dang gar darn good or whatever that band was that killer band he did a tribute to uh, you know, a patriotic tribute uh, because of uh, the the election and all that stuff, and and with you know a medley of of you know everything, America and all these great uh, patriotic songs, and it, it, you could hear a pin drop in that play. Well, well, I appreciate you know it was uh it was kind of a last minute thing that day, just kind of was in the mood to do that so i threw a chart together for it and uh you know i just i knew the guys would treat it sensitively and and yeah it was a beautiful moment it was really oh uh, uh, it was great and, then, and and there was a, a an amazing moment the plane right before the last note of the song a jet flies over and it was right at a place where i could pause and we could let the jet fly over and then play our last note it was beautiful so yeah it was it was it was staged it was it was, it was almost staged right it, 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 it 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 was like at the it's like at the Super Bowl when the the B two bomber d flies by or when it when it rained during uh, Purple Rain for uh, yeah Prince, right <laughs> um, well hey uh, you know we have that clip actually so we're gonna go ahead and watch it all right all right so then we'll be back with Barbara Morrison.
we're back. We're back. How the heck did you do that, Tony? You just What's that, that was on the fly. You decided that, or did you have a chart for those guys ready, or what? Oh, I just I did a little arrangement of it that day. You know, I, yeah. I'll tell you what. I, there have been times before with, with Bill Cantos um, where um, at previous shows over the years we'll just slip into a little bit of like the national anthem or something. Uh huh. But I just. I've always thought, oh, I should turn this into more, a little bit more of a medley, and so that's what we did that night. That was beautiful. That was beautiful, and uh, and the of course the uh, I don't know how much you had to pay FedEx to drive that that uh, <laughs> over, but it was great. That was, that was a full military uh, flyover. <laughs> well, listen, uh, you know, before that we had a, a full ninety minutes of of. Uh, uh, Lori Bell with Gene Coyne drone, Alex Frank on bass, Josh Nelson on piano. And, uh, you know, we want to thank you for watching our broadcast on Sundays and Thursdays. And if you can and you're able to, please show your support and go to steamersjacks.com uh, and throw a buck or two in the tip jar there or go to Venmo slash uh, Jack's Hideaway. And, uh, you know, tonight I'm honored to bring a very, very – good longtime friend of mine and just one of the most talented and lovely persons on this earth barbara morrison's gonna be here and we're gonna have her live on the stage or live on our show here and she is coming on our stage at campus jacks on no on december, december 10th, 10th which is a thursday tickets are not up yet but they will be soon at campusjacks.com. We hope that you can come see her. She's going to have the boo crew with her. And uh, be before she comes up, we're going to do a little video of her and El Segundo doing a, a, a Rosemary Cla a Clooney classic, How About You? So let's go to the, the video so we can get right back with Barbara Morrison. I like New York in June How about you? I like a Gershwin too How about you? I like the fireside When the storm is due I like potato chips Moonlight motor trips How about you? I like a real good and I just can't get my fear And Denzel Washington's looks Lord, they give me a thrill Holding hands in the movie show When all the lights are low May not be new, but I like it how
about you I like the fireside When the storm is due I like potato chips from light motor chips How about you? I like a real good book And I just can't get my thrill And Denzel Washington's looks Oh, they give me a thrill Holding hands in the movie show When all the lights are low May not be new, but I like it, how about you? We're live and look who's with us. Oh my God. The lovely, the talented, the one and only Barbara Morrison. Hello, Barbara. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. We're honored to have you. Yeah. Thanks for having Tim come. How are you, Barbara? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You guys, I miss you. Miss you too. Yeah. I know. Now, Terrence, I love I love uh, all the times that you introduce how you've had these long relationships with people because of steamers. And I love when I get to say, I've known them longer than you. Yes. There you <laughs> because I, I met Barbara back in the mid 80s. There when you I go. Was, when I, in fact, I'm going to tell a little story. Uh, I was just a kid. I was, I was like maybe 18 years old. And Joe Sparaza used to let me come hang out at Cafe Lido. Yeah, and and one night she, uh, she I, I don't remember how it was. I think it was her gig, or maybe she was singing with somebody else or something. But I I got to get on stage with her, and uh, we got to pl do that a, a, a few times together over the years. But I remember one night in particular, and I was really green and really didn't have my act together. But um, you know, I was I was eager and hungry. And I remember afterwards, I came I I came to you, and I I had had a song that didn't go so well, and I I. Uh, went up to you afterwards. And I was sort of apologizing, saying, "Oh, I'm sorry about that one song." Would you, uh, just say so you no. Know, I need to stop. We're hearing a lot of noise. Hold on, hold on. We're getting. Tim, is that on your end? Tim. Okay, it's okay. Gone. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna. I don't know if any of that got lost. So I came up to you on. This is about 1984, 85. No, 85 maybe. And uh, I said, "Oh, I'm sorry about that one tune." You know, I I don't know those chords very well and, and you said the sweetest thing to me and it's sweet for two reasons you said uh uh pretty much and i've remembered it all these years you said you know she said tony you've already got the sound and you've got the heart so the rest of it will come uh. and and what i love about that especially as i thought of it over the years and as i've uh been able to to address younger musicians too was you didn't just like lie to me and say oh you sounded great you know, which a lot of people do. That's the that's the gut response. Like you, you were like, basically saying, "Yeah, you screwed that up, but you'll get there." You know, and that was that was just so sweet and supportive. Oh, and I just I love you for that. So I've always remembered that. I'm glad I said something nice. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't gotten the rest of it together yet, but but it still gives me hope. <laughs> I love you. Well, too. you know, uh, before I. Before we let Barbara do all the talking, I'm going to, I guess, throw in my little bit there, too. And then uh, I, there's a lot that I want to hear about Barbara. Me too. You know, for those of you who don't know, in addition to being this world-class performer and and just entertainer and all that, she, like uh, we're, what we're doing here and what I did at Steamer, is, is a, a presenter. And she is... I don't even remember how it must be 15 years now you've had the Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center. 13. And that's in, I believe, Lamert Park. How many? 13. 13 years. 14? 13. 13 years. And, and you know, uh, and I can tell you as someone that did this, it is not easy to, to run a club, not easy to run this thing. You know, it's, it's, it takes constant attention. It takes working yourself to the bone. And, uh, you know, Barbara always did this and had a, a smile on her face. And, and uh, you know, as far as Steamers is concerned, Barbara played at Steamers for 17 of the years that I was there. And uh, most of the time, once, if not twice a month on Saturdays and sometimes Fridays. And, uh, you know, it was always a full house, and and Barbara was always 
so kind. And, and she would sit, you know, a lot of people at the break go in the back and they hide. She would sit down with the audience and talk to them or they may, may buy CDs or whatever. But And she'd stay after. And, you know, there was such a connection with the audience there that I don't think I have seen with any other performer uh, oh. at, at Steamers. And, and yeah. we always loved to have her there. And, uh, you know, I I just felt so blessed to to, to have ha, uh, had her in my life and to have had her at Steamers. And, and she was definitely w one of the greatest performers I've ever had in that place. And well, so I, far, so far, she hasn't needed to be here with us. So let's let her talk a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Barbara, how are you? How how is everything going for you right now with the pandemic and and what's going on? I'm doing just fine. I'm doing just fine. I'm healing again, Karen. A lady ran a stop sign and creamed me. Oh no! Yeah, so I'm healing again, but I'm doing good. I'm doing wow. real good on the positive side. Not much work, but you know what? My father. I went to see my father. He was in the hospital. I was 17 years old. And I just got a scholarship to Eastern Michigan University. My mother and father were separated and my and my mother was pregnant. But I went up to the hospital to see my father. And he said, baby, has anybody ever asked you what you wanted to do, what you wanted to be? I said, no, daddy, why? He said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to be a singer. He said, you go be a singer, baby. You go be a singer. I promise you, I'll take care of your mother and your sisters and your brothers, and you can always come home. You can all, I'll keep the house no pay, and you can always go home. Because if you find something you like to do, you'll never have to work a day in your life. So Terrence, I didn't work for you at all. I just came down and had a ball. <laughs> oh, Barbara, that's the greatest. That's the greatest oh, oh. I just came down and had a ball. Gosh, <laughs> well. You know, one thing I never always yeah, wanted. And we did have a ball. One thing I always wanted to do with you that I never got a chance to do. I wanted to have a good fight. We never had a fight. <laughs> How come? <laughs> Why did you have to be oh, so... I know. We didn't we fight, should have we? A fight. We never had a fight. We got to get one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just never... I think I maybe I was a little bit intimidated by you. Maybe uh, oh, I was afraid you'd whoop my ass. <laughs> No way! You always know, seem like my big brother. You know, you always. Yeah, seem, well, I I should have fought with you though. We should have had a fight. Barbara, you're you're sitting in the Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center, which I've seen uh, that name appear, you know, on on social media and and things over the years and events happening. But I I don't know the story behind it. So can you tell us a little bit about this Performing Arts Center in your name? Well, what, one day I was uh, I was at Carnegie Hall in New York with Etta James. Well, she went back to Los Angeles and I went on over to Europe with the band. And when I got on the plane, I was at, I had a first class seat. I sat next to a gentleman from Dinfermline and which was in Scotland. Then I looked on my itinerary. I was going to Scotland. I looked on my itinerary and it said Dinfermline. And I said, I'm going to Scotland. And he said, do you know who's from Scotland? And I said, no, no. He said, Carnegie. I said, oh, my God, I just worked Carnegie Hall. He said, you're, you didn't work Carnegie. I said, yes, I did. I just played at Carnegie Hall with Etta James and the Johnny Otis Show. When I got to Scotland, guess where I played? Carnegie Hall. Wow. They did the original Carnegie Hall in Scotland, in wow. Denver, where, where Carnegie was from. And when I came back from from Europe, my diabetes was so bad. Terrence remembers, I had to have my leg amputated. I said, what can I do with my life? What can I do? And I looked at Terrence and I looked at Carnegie. And I says, you know what? I'm gonna get me a little Carnegie Hall. Since I can't travel that much, I love what I do. And my dad said, if you get, if you find something you love to do, you'll never have to work a day in your life. So I got lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. And I found something that I love to do. So I'm not working. I'm having a ball. 
I really am. Thanks to Terrence. Yeah. And if I told him, he would probably freak out. But the, the original Carnegie Hall was really no bigger than Steamers. Wow. <laughs> but look how big his name is all over the world. It's like the Royal Albert Hall in New England. I mean, in England. What can I say? So I'm, I'm, I'm just taking after my big brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, so what goes on there? Well, we have plays. We have a little bit bigger stage than uh, than I'm used to, but it's just right for the community. You know, it's in primarily a predominantly African American community. There's a actually, it's one of the richest African American communities communities in the United States. Uh, there's 124 African American buildings in the uh, businesses in this area, one little area, one little bigger than Maxwell Street in Chicago. And bigger, a little bit bigger than Harlem, maybe. I don't know. I better be speaking out of turn. <laughs> but it's it made me feel like I was <laughs> giving something back, you know. Yeah. And that's how I felt. I felt well. If I'm going to have this disease, I better do something I like where I like it. And I, I'm here, and I'm having a ball. Well, you know what, Car Carnegie Hall, maybe it's too big of a dream for me, but now I can dream about playing at the Barbara Morris and performing <laughs> well, you can Anytime you're ready, we'll be glad to have you. <laughs> yep. Oh, and then yeah. my little brother Terrence, when when I had my first leg amputated, he, he did a fundraiser for me and boy, I nobody ever raised that much money for me. But uh I'm about to cry right now. But he <laughs> he did. So I know he loves me. <laughs> I love well, him. and and uh, and you're yeah. I, you're I guess you're a little bit of a crier because the last time I haven't seen you for I don't know twenty years, and you uh -huh. and I saw each other was it three years ago at Helen Borger's fundraiser? Yeah. And um, oh, you were so sweet that day, just when we saw each other, and you teared up, and it was so <laughs> great. What a what a great little. It was moment. nice to see you. Yeah. I missed Helen too. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Well, well, we guess what? What you get? Oh, I'm sorry. There's a little delay. Go ahead, finish what you're saying. No, I, no, I'm saying what? You said guess what? I said what? Yeah, go ahead, Darren. Okay, I was going to say. Well, the great thing that you know the the history that you have, and and I think this is a really nice thing because it will be kind of a reunion to have you and me and now Tony together yeah. at Campus Jacks doing Steamers Jazz I'm, there. I'm, and I'm really, really excited and looking looking forward to developing something. And, you know, we can coordinate with something with your, your Performing Arts Center too. Yeah. I just think it's great. And can you tell people where to go to – to find out about it, is it just on Facebook or BNPAC? Uh, yeah, it's uh, being there you uh, go. There you go. By, well, GoDaddy's uh, redoing it for me. But uh, you can go to. Uh, uh, Good. <laughs> you can go to Facebook too. And I have some shows that I've, I have. Uh, if you go to yeah. uh, Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center on Facebook, there's some shows that I've been streaming. You can see. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Not as you. I'm getting. I'm. I'm taking after you, big brother. You know, <laughs> well, it's gonna be. It's gonna be great to have you at Campus Jack. You're gonna love this venue. It's uh, a, a. You haven't been there yet, but it's a, a really like the best outdoor space for for COVID and all of that. It's just it, you feel like you're in a great club, even yeah, though it's, it's all fantastic. outdoors. So it's fantastic. And uh, the sound is great. Everything about it is great. So I can't wait to see you there and hear you in that context. I can't wait. You know, I, 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 and Tony, I'm going to one-up you now. <laughs> That'll be a first. I, I have to one-up Tony on this one, <laughs> you know, because he, he's he's real good at one-upping me all the time. But <laughs> I used to to uh, maintain Barbara's website. <laughs> That's right. Or well, that would ex that would explain why why she just said that GoDaddy has to fix it. That's right. right <laughs> no, uh, she had trusted her. She had trusted quite a few people in that thing, and they always seem to kind of mess it up. She go, Terrence, you got to help me help out. Me. Come, come help me with this, and I would help her all oh, those days. Yeah, oh did. my gosh! Yes, oh yes. my gosh! 
Well, you did a good job. You should be proud of yourself. Well, your I don't know. I, I, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you did so I, I, I got to ask our guy that you can't see, folks, Mr. Tim, are we on a schedule now? I, we still- I think we are, yeah. I think we're going to have to say goodbye. We're going to have to say goodbye to you. Bye. I'll see you on December 10th. December tenth, but we're gonna we're gonna go out with a video of you uh, singing Route sixty six. Oh, so, okay. So for the audience, you're not gone quite yet, but it's lovely to see you and talk to you, and can't wait to see you on the tenth. Love you, Kenneth. Love you, Barbara. Love you. We'll Love talk you. to you on the tenth. Thank you, Tony Bonnie Maroni. <laughs> talk to you soon. Okay. You know it, so don't be shy. Here we go. If you ever planned to motor west travel my way take the highway it's the best come on and get your kicks on route 66 i can't hear you it winds from chicago to l.a almost two thousand miles all the way come on and get your kicks on Route 66 Well, you go to St. Louis Joplin, Missouri Oklahoma City looks mighty pretty You'll see I'm a real old Gallup, Mexico Blackstaff, Arizona Don't forget Winona Cape, Boston, San Bernardino But you gotta be early But on your coast, get your car So good to see Barbara. I know. And she has, know, she has the greatest smile, too. The greatest smile, the greatest attitude. And she just is, I, she's younger now. Yeah. yeah. I, I just can't believe it. it. It was fantastic. You know, 
And what a great show, you know, and, and it's going to continue. Well, we're not here. done because L- Lori Bell's going to join us and uh, she and I are going to jam together. Nice. So. All right. Let, let's hear it. Let's hear that flute. Okay. No, no, I'll just save it for the duet. Save it for the duet. <laughs> well, listen, I want to run before we bring Lori on. I want to run through uh, what we got coming up on the 12th, uh, upcoming next Thursday. We have in our Steamers Jazz and Jacks uh, Artist Showcase, Elena and George Gilliam with the uh, George Gilliam with the Gilliam Quintet, they call it now. On Friday, November 13th, live on the stage, Salazano's All In group will be here. And a special Friday night edition of Steamers Jazz at Jacks. We're also broadcasting that too. By the way, tickets for these are all available at campusjacks.com. Sunday, November 15th, Nina Herzog, incredible vocalist. She's a stage actress also. She's going to, and she's presenting music by Moonlight. Uh, then on the 19th, the first time at uh, Campus Jacks, we're doing Latin jazz, Steamers Jazz, Latin jazz with the Francisco Torres Latin Jazz Band. Uh, and on Sunday, November 22nd, our prelude with Greg Vale and his Brick Alley Blues Band will be there. And then a special edition Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, the 25th special feature, the Swing Kittens, incredible jazz group, a trio of girl singers that are or women singers or whatever you're supposed to call them now, I don't know. And they're fantastic in the the vein of the uh, Andrew Sisters, really, really good band. All those for in-person cool. dinner tickets are available at campusjacks.com, where we have socially distant table seating, following all the best practices for health and safety. And also, if you're not here in Southern California, you can still be a part of Steamers Jazz at Jacks. Audience family, you can join all of our broadcasts at steamersjacks.com, on YouTube and Facebook at Jacks Hideaway, on Facebook at campusjacks.com. And we want to thank you all for watching our broadcasts here on Sundays and Thursdays and occasional Fridays. And if you want to help us out or even join, we have a membership there. Or even with just a few bucks, you can throw into our tip jar at steamersjacks.com or you can Venmo Jacks Hideaway. And I think that it's about time for us to bring the incredible flautist from real Southern. We call this Southern California here, but that's Southern California down there. Lori Bell, how you doing, dear? Great hey, to see you. Up? I was disappointed Lori- that you didn't introduce me. I was like, that's okay. Oh, Lori, no. we've never met. My name is Tony, and it's nice hey, to meet Tony, you. Tony, I definitely know who you are, of course, been following you for a long time. And oh, It's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure yeah. to meet you. Although, Tim, we got to have Tim do something about this camera angle right now. because oh. it, looks, it looks like you're uh, at the end of a sewage line or something. It looks like a big pipe oh, coming to Or oh, you yeah. always take the mic off and just talk to yeah, the mic. It's a different camera that, she, that everyone else is seeing, Tony. Oh, got it. Oh, I didn't realize oh, I that. Okay, <laughs> different camera. Everybody else seeing a different camera. Yeah, that's true. That's Let's true. Right. <laughs> well, right, well, we just had go. Lori on stage Lori. for an hour and a half there with uh, Gene Coy and Alex Frank and Josh Nelson. Just a, you know, a couple of guys from down the block right now. Incredible star group there. How did this show go out there? Oh, my God. Well, I'm still trying to come down from it, um, as you can imagine. I won't come down anytime soon. But, no, it was just a real honor and privilege to get to, you know, play with Josh again. And uh, Josh and I have done, a, you know, a few concerts over the years and uh, uh, played with Gene Coy just for a minute in September. You were there. Um, and Alex Frank and I, we worked just for uh, – we worked uh, – one concert with Tamir uh, a number of years ago. So this was just uh, such a joy uh, and really just so much fun. It was really a blast. I really had a great time. Well, we're so happy to have you join us here at the Steamers Jazz at Jacks. And, and uh, you know, we're doing all we can to, to promote this music. And, and uh, you're a perfect fit. We're really, really happy. And it, it was a good turnout, too. So. It was a pretty good turnout for jazz. I mean, I was really happy. You know, I really tried to, you know, hit my mailing list and uh, got a lot of people from San Diego drive up and had a couple of people from L.A. come down. So I was really happy about that, you know. Uh, By the way, Terrence, I just wanted to say it's so great to see you back doing what you love to do, man. Because it's been a while, you know. Um, I played at Steamers with Dave Mackay a number of years ago. 
and we just lost Dave. Uh, yeah, rest his soul, man. Wow. Uh, there, there was a, there was a fine gentleman, an incredible uh, piano player, and, oh, and yeah, uh, yeah. Wow, that was that was some time ago, and yeah, and I really appreciate that. I'm happy to be back, and you know, it was something. Uh, I'll make the story brief, but. When I told steamers, you know, my father was very ill. I stayed with him until he died. And then people wanted me to get kind of back into it, but I, it wasn't right. And then Tony was doing this thing with Campus Jacks, and they approached me, and they said, we'll do it right, you know, and they are doing it right, as you witnessed tonight. The thing about it, I, yeah. I, I mean, man, I was just blown away. You know, when George uh, Clavin invited me to come play in September, I was sort of like, hmm live I, you know and he said no nah, it's great it's, you'll, you'll be happy and i was just blown away i'm like wow you know uh, san diego doesn't have anything like this yeah. i don't think la does no no la doesn't right now i mean no. i know Colorado opened up the patio but no yeah no 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 this is like totally happening this is like <laughs> this is the best venue in southern california i don't think san francisco has anything like I, no i i truly believe that right now they're you know it, it's a perfect setup, and, you, you know, those of you who don't see what's going on behind the scenes, we've got Tim Ellis running all this stuff. we got Golden on the sound. we got John Wynn on the videos. We're broadcasting these things, the stage, the sound, the lights, everything, the audio. I mean, you know, first of all, I didn't have to schlep my PA today. Right. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah. Um, amazing sound system, sound person. The lights. I mean, really, it's videoed. I mean, yeah. I, oh, Tim, I. It, this is like you guys are doing this beyond right. I mean, yeah. What more could you ask for? Maybe like Tony playing flute with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why not? You know. Hey, man. Don't ask. Come on. <laughs> well, I I would do it, but I think I've got a pad, a leaky pad. So uh -oh. yeah, I'm gonna have to. Not that next time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Lori for Tim was cracking up, you guys. Yeah, that leaky pod is not that's one of those things, Tony. That's like a, the know. Cuban rum. <laughs> Inside <laughs> <of> it, <you> know. <laughs> anyway, uh Lori, why don't you give us a like a little uh two minute uh uh, bio of you to tell the audience, you know, where you came from, how you got into the jazz thing, where you starts, where your influences, and you know, oh, what you have going on in the, yeah. for the future and with COVID and all that. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if you guys saw the show, but I did mention I'm originally from Brooklyn. You know, that's right. Those are my roots. And uh, my dad was a big band lead trumpet player for like 30 years. And hung out on 52nd Street after every gig. So I had a lot of great stories passed down to me. And um, my dad just came out to California because he wanted to retire from the, he'd, you know, worked in New York for about 35 years uh, and wanted to play golf, you know. <laughs> Actually he came out here uh, on the, you know, on tour one, one year with the bands. He just couldn't believe his eyes, you know, just could, because it was, uh, you know, 20, 20 inches of snow and blue skies and palm trees out here. And he, he flipped. So, yeah. you know, just up and said, we're moving to San Diego. Anyway, um, you know, those are my roots. And um, yeah, I live in San Diego. Uh, you know, um, yeah, uh, it's good. You know, I do a lot of teaching and a lot of gigging like everybody else. Um, also play piano. So I do a lot of sol solo gigs. I sub for some guys in town. And I mean, I'm not like, I wouldn't say I'm, you know, Pianist, flute's obviously my main instrument, but you know, uh, I do that as well. And uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, I'm I recorded for Resonance Records uh, a number of years ago. So uh, I did a Javon music of Javon uh, album for George, um, and uh, you know, he uh, he calls me to do stuff, um, and I was really really glad when he called me for this. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, George Clavin is is a, a, a great guy with, with uh, Resonance Records. I've had a relationship with him for about 17 years. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he does it right. He's doing a lot of good stuff out there. He's introducing new people. He just did a thing with Eddie Daniels, I believe. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, he, he's re-released a lot of, lot of great stuff. And, and uh, you know, he, he's a very hard worker. You know, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, speaking of that, we we actually um, 
two years ago in October, we, we all played at Birdland for his 10th anniversary and Eddie got to do his, uh, at the time they had a uh, new release, uh, the music of Egberto Gismonti. It was a fantastic album and, you know, it was great because I got a chance to work with Eddie for a minute. Uh, we got a chance to play a couple. We, we became great friends. Eddie and I are both from Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, on the same, okay, he's, He's a little older than me, but whatever, it doesn't matter. We grew up on the same street. Wow. wow. Being next to each other. I was a building right at the foot of the boardwalk. He was the building right next to well, when I found that out. I mean, I just like I dropped to my knees. I just could not believe it. I could not well, believe would it. you have been there at the same time? No, no, no. Eddie's like twenty years. 20 years. Okay, yeah. 20 I didn't years know how much older. At least, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know if he had stayed there a long time. Maybe, um, when, you were, maybe when you were a little kid or something. So, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. already been out here, I think. But you know, he's great. But yeah, George, you know, he just continues to you know put out all these historical recordings. That's really what the label became more famous for, um, like releasing you know uh, Wes Montgomery never heard before recordings, Eric Dolphy. Um, mm. We did a big Eric Dolphy tribute uh, before COVID, the summer before. Did he did not do a Nat King Cole thing too? Also, Nat King Cole. Um, yeah. He's put out two uh, Bill Evans records of all unheard. I mean, on and on, like the list is long and distinguished. He's really be, that's what the label is really famous for. But George keeps you know finding people and and of course he loves his Brazilian music. I don't you know. I don't know if you know that he's half Brazilian. A lot of people don't realize, know that, that he's half Brazilian. That's why he has this big love for Brazilian music, you know? Good. Yeah, it's great, you know? It works for flute, right, Tony? Yeah, <laughs> it does, yeah. Although I didn't do a lot of it tonight. I wanted to. I, I, I did one for him. I you know, I don't know if you saw the concert or not. I, saw I, saw, I was able to see little bits of it as we were preparing. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, so how is the whole lockdown thing affected you and, and have you transitioned into something else or, or? Yeah. well you know I like I was saying um, uh, since I had my last live gig in front of an audience at the end of February mm. um, and since then just uh, like four live streams with different group settings and you know it was okay I mean I was grateful just to play I was happy to play but it's just not the same. Not the same. You know, yeah. with, it's not the same with an audience. Uh, still teaching, doing all my teaching online. Um, some of the kids from the university um, and some of my private students. So, uh, uh, yeah, you know, it, actually, Skype has wound up being a pretty darn good medium. I don't know, Tony, are you teaching on Skype at all? Or I, Zoom? No, I'm not really teaching, but I've been doing different seminars. And uh, I mean, I've done some. Uh, yeah teaching for you know not not private teaching it's not mm -hmm. not one of my strong suits so oh okay but yeah well, but for those know, I, but I've for the class that, thing it's um, been really I've good i've always had some students uh you know uh, mm -hmm. oh i think we have a delay sorry oh i yeah, think they're... i lost it we have a little a little delay or something yeah. um but you know skype is a good media i i found that i could do a lot of detail work so i was really pleased when I knew I was going to have to start teaching on Skype and yeah. I thought, Oh my God, this isn't going to work. And then I was like blown away after the first lesson. I'm like, this is going to work. This, you can get an incredible amount of detail. So that's what I'm doing. You know, a lot of shedding, composing and composed a whole album worth of material. Um, even uh, started writing uh, some classical uh, type solo flute works. So I've been trying my hardest to stay as creative as possible and mainly just shedding, you know, Great. Lori, what, what's the, the, I know right oh, now I during. I think we lost everybody. Uh-oh, are okay. we there? Can you hear me? We're good. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. We're, we're okay. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I can now. A, I did get a message. Yeah, though, okay. okay. We're going to be going to the last dance and uh, this and that after. I think, uh, uh, at, is that correct, Tony, or am I? Am I yes, yeah, so I think we're going to close that with a couple songs from my show the other night with Grant Geisman and Bill Cantos and yeah. Lyman Medeiros and John Ferraro. Sure. And hey, listen, Lozano. thank you guys so much for having me. Oh. I, like I say, it, just an honor and a privilege. And uh, it's great to see you, Tony. Great Thank to you. have you. Um, you guys are the best. 
Thank you so much Thank for having you. me. And they can go to uh, LoriBell.com okay, or how can hope they find you? Hope your... to see you again. How can they find oh, your yeah. stuff? I think we're out. Yeah, I, I, think uh, our, Lori I think our connection got too bad. LoriBellFluke.com. Okay. You're live. All right. Terrence, you with me? I'm sorry. Are we together? I, Terrence, we're together, me? Tony. Uh, but, I think the uh, internet connection got a okay, little funky. Okay, so Tim, Tim needs to mute uh, that side. Sorry. Tim, if you can mute that side, and Terrence and I will finish out over here. So, Terrence, are you with me? Yeah, we're just waiting. For, I, I'm with you, but <laughs> I think they've got to leave the room on that side because we're hearing it. But, Tony, yeah. uh, actually, after hearing you talk about not being a strong suit, I realize that I'm alone with you on a private lesson right here. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I understand the sentiment. You know? Yeah, um, I, I'm, feel, I'm feeling a little creepy at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why don't you lead us right. into what what we're closing out with? Well, I think we're going to close out with a couple clips from last Thursday's show with my band. Um, I say my band, but you know, really, these were just guests of mine who were like are they're all people I respect so much. And I just, I just took a shot that maybe I could get them all to share the stage with me that night. And so, oh, geez, uh, so fantastic. we did, and it was such a great fun night. And I was just oh, felt so honored to be with those guys. And, uh, and so we've got a couple of tunes. The selection yeah. of music was really, really interesting. And, and Oh, that's good. Great flow. We all loved it. That's great. Well, we're going to hear a couple of those tunes. And I think the first one is kind of special to me because at, you know, as a kid playing, when I started playing trumpet in the late 70s, Chuck Mangione was the biggest thing in the world for a, a trumpet player. And it's because of falling in love with Chuck's music, uh, particularly the album Children of Sanchez, which, which Grant Geisman played on. It's because of that album I became a musician. And right. Grant Geisman, to get to, to work with him and get to know him over the years, just been a great honor. You know, I used to, I've told him before as a little joke, like, I used to have his picture on my wall when I was in high school because he was part of the Chuck Mangione band, you know. Um, and so this first tune is one uh, I wasn't planning on doing it, but it, it's in my book. And as we were just guys were, you know, at, on the gig and just going through my book, somebody pointed out a, a Mangione tune. And I said, hey, there's this one tune in there. And Grant was on the original recording. And so we did that that night. And that's the first tune, which is called um, Last Dance. And it's from the Feel So Good album. And uh, and then then we're, we're going to go out with this and that, which is a song written by Grant Geisman. So that's what we've got coming up. So until uh, next time, everybody, thank you for being with us. Terrence, uh, and good to see you. You too, man. I'll, can I leave by saying go to steamersjacks.com for, for, to throw a little something in the tip jar. You for may. all of those wonderful shows coming up, go to campusjacks.com and uh, – you know, we appreciate it. Don't forget, Barbara Morrison's going to be here on December 10th. We will have those tickets up probably within a day or two. Awesome. God bless you, Tony. Talk to you soon, bud. See you later, man. We're going to do a song now that, uh, as it turns out, Grant Geisman was on the original recording of all the way back in the 1870s. Um... This was on an album called Feel So Good, but this is a song that I don't think got enough attention because I think it's a great little, little piece of music here. So we saw it in the book earlier and we decided to do it tonight. So this is called Last Dance. And this is written by Chuck Mangione. <laughs>
whole night of pretty songs. <laughs> <laughs> but then you'd fall in love with me and that'd be a whole thing. And <laughs> you'd only break our hearts. <laughs> I would only break your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a song written by Grant Geisman called This and That. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen. I think that's going to wrap it up for us tonight because you can't really go out on anything after that, right? Plus, plus Bill's got to get his suit back to the mortuary by nine, so... Yeah, that time. Back to <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Ferraro back there on the drums. <laughs> Lyman Medeiros on the bass. Yeah, Grant Geisman on guitar. Yeah. Sal Lozano on saxophone. Yeah. Bill Cantos yeah. on the piano. Yeah. My name is Tony Guerrero. Thank you so much for Tony being with us. Tony. Terrence Love, ladies and gentlemen.